Hello everyone, for today's class we are going to learn chapter 8, which is biodiversity. And today we are going to look at 8.1, classification system and naming of organism. And right now we are going to focus on the main features of organism in each kingdom. Each kingdom consists of prokaryote and eukaryote. Archaea bacteria and eubacteria are prokaryote organisms. Meanwhile, protesta, fungi, plantae, and animalia are eukaryote organisms. The next aspect that we are going to look at are unicellular organisms and also multicellular organisms. Archaea bacteria and eubacteria are unicellular organisms. Plantae and also animalia are multicellular organisms. And next one we have protesta and also fungi. They can either be a unicellular or multicellular organism. Next we have Archaebacteria Kingdom. Archaebacteria Kingdom, also known as primitive bacteria. Primitive means the oldest or the first one. It has cell wall with no peptide glycan, which means polymer made up of sugars and amino acid. Archaebacteria kingdom can be divided into three groups based on their habitats. Firstly, we have methanogen, which means obligate and aerobic bacteria are found in swamps and the digestive tract of ruminants and human. Second one, we have halophile. Halophile means salt lovers. That's why halophile bacteria can be found in places with extremely high salt concentration such as the Dead Sea. Lastly, we have thermophile. From the word thermo, we all know it means something related to temperature. Thermophile means bacteria that can withstand high temperature and flourishes at an optimum temperature of 60 degree to 80 degree. Thermophile bacteria are usually found in hot springs and highly acidic locations like the Yellowstone National Park in the US. These are all references pictures for peptide glycan, the Dead Sea, and also the Yellowstone National Park. These are the examples of archaea bacteria. The first one we have Halobacterium salinarum and the second one we have Sulfolobus species. Next we have Eubacteria aka true bacteria. This bacteria has cell wall made up of peptidoglycan. The cytoplasm of the Eubacteria contains some ribosome and plasmids but none of the membrane and closed organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum and others. These bacteria are classified according to their shape. The examples of eubacteria are streptococcus, pneumonia, and vibro cholerae. Next, we have protesta kingdom. Protesta kingdom can be either a heterotroph, which means consumer, or an autotroph, which means primary producer, or both. Protesta kingdom has simple cell organism without specialized tissue. This kingdom contains a nucleus that is bound by a nuclear membrane as well as other membrane-bound organelles. Protists are divided into three groups, which are protozoa, algae, and slime mold. The examples of protozoa, we have amoeba, paramecium, and ulgrena. As for algae, we have Chlamydomonas and Spirogyra. Lastly, the example of slime mold. We have Fiserum polycephalum. Next, we have Fungi Kingdom. They are also heterotrophs, which is saprophytes or parasites. The cell wall made up of chitin, which means fibrous substance consisting of polysaccharides, and the body of fungi is made up of the thread light network of hyphae called mycelium. The example of fungi are yeast and mushroom. The next, we have 
Plantae Kingdom. It can synthesize their own food via photosynthesis or photoautotrophs because they have chlorophyll. Plantae Kingdom also can undergo asexual or sexual reproduction. The examples of Plantae Kingdom are seedless plants and plants with seed, also known as all flowering plants. These are the examples of Plantae Kingdom. For seedless plants, we have ferns, and for flowering plants, we have Bougainvillea species. Last but not least, we have Animalia Kingdom. Animalia Kingdom are heterotrophs. Most animals can move and reproduce sexually. The example of Animalia Kingdom are elephant for vertebrate and starfish for invertebrate. That is all for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe everyone.